Hi, everybody. Meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this Saturday afternoon for meteorologistjoechaffee.com and weatherlawisland.com and ssstormchasers.com. Uh, we'll uh, take a look at the new GFS. And I have to be honest, I was kind of hoping that the GFS would come in and take everything out further to the right and join the vast majority of models uh, from last night. But naturally, you know, it didn't quite happen that way. So uh, let's take a look and see what ha what, what it does on this afternoon's run. And, you know, it threads the needle somehow uh, by taking Matthew between Jamaica and uh, Haiti. And in fact, they kind of, the center gets pretty close to the westernmost tip of the south coast of Haiti before it goes over eastern Cuba, then heads up into the Bahamas. So now we're actually into Wednesday morning. Now, the one thing I would caution is in terms of the strength that's being indicated by the model, since the models have really done a really poor job of um, showing intensity, uh, I, I really wouldn't put too much credence in what it's showing in, in terms of a literal pressure, because I think it's going to be a lot lower than that. Now, uh, it straddles the uh, Bahamas and then moves up parallel to the for Florida coast. It is a little bit further east at this point than um, the prior two model runs. Uh, so uh, you're think I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, this is where you know it'll probably swing out, but uh, there are a few things going on. Again, it's the subtleties of each model run and the small changes in the atmosphere that are having uh, some impact. So let's uh, take a look, and I'm going to go really tight and put uh, the upper air on so I can show you what the GFS is actually doing. And unlike, let me just back it up just a little bit. You see what's going on here? It almost looks like a nose that's pushing into the coastline. The GFS. And rightly or wrongly, that we don't know, but it does uh, rebuild this upper ridge back inland of the coast. So that upper ridge kind of keeps this moving, at least on the GFS, no worse than, say, due north, okay, um, or maybe even slightly west of due north. The other thing is the trough out in the west, which on this particular model run on the GFS is a little bit deeper. In other words, a little bit more intense, uh, a little bit more north-south oriented in a sense, as opposed to being oriented um, south, uh, nor northeast to southwest, which it is, but um, the orientation is tilted a little bit more than it was on the prior runs. So, you know, that being said, what happens is uh, it takes the hurricane and then kind of straddles it right over the outer banks of North Carolina, uh, exiting it. Uh, just touching easternmost North Carolina, but you can see at this point, there's your tr uh, your trough. It's being mean to me. <laughs> okay, so let me see if I can get this to, to there. So there's your trough right there. Here's your hurricane right over here. So the, the model, the GFS, has a sharper trough coming out of the plains and into the Midwest. I think in the end, this is what's going to be key uh, to the forecast, because if the other models are more correct in the idea that that trough is weaker and flatter, then we may have uh, not much to worry about here. And from this point, uh, we have uh, the model taking it, you know, I'm, I'm showing you the upper features here at this point. So we're going to, I'll show you the surface. It kind of, you know, straddles and, and just passes just offshore. And, it, and when we look at the upper air, here and this is now we are at a uh, very early 2 a.m. Sunday morning there's the axis of your trough it's actually captured uh, the uh, hurricane or whatever form it is and I want to bring that up because um, we may wind up seeing this just transition I think if it if it really winds up doing this because I'm not sold by uh, on it uh, but if it really winds up doing this we may see it transition over into a non-tropical storm uh, at some you know at some point because the water temperatures north of Cape Hatteras north of 35 degrees north are well under 80, and in uh, in fact they've already cooled up to the upper 60s, middle and upper 60s near our shoreline. So uh, we're going to have to this thing's going to have to move like a rocket ship to maintain a maintain a certain amount of intensity. Now the littoral track on this model again this is the model output takes the surface slow uh, east of Atlantic City, south of Islip, and then east of Montauk into southeastern New England, 
and moves northeastward. I, uh, I really, it does look like, you know, it almost looks like a wintertime nor'easter. And I have to tell you, if this winds up happening like this, it may not be, um, you know, it's not like you're taking a direct hit. I mean, you know, if, if this were to move parallel to the coast north northeast, we would get rain, gales. It would be like a really, really bad nor'easter, but uh, it would not have um, the hurricane type impact where you take a, a hurricane that actually makes landfall and then you deal with, you know, uh, the tidal, tidal surges and that kind of thing. I mean, you would deal with all, you know, tidal flooding and beach erosion and everything else in, in this sort of scenario. But this is not a worst case scenario. Uh, if we wind up taking, if this winds up being right, and I'm not saying that it is, um, I, I'm just wanting to, wanting to point that out. You're never going to see a Category 5 or a Category 4 hurricane up here. A Category 3 is rare. The physics of the atmosphere just would not, and the thermodynamics in the atmosphere just would not support um, a, a system that strong. So I want to take a look at the upper air uh, a little bit more because that ultimately is what's going to be important here. And we'll just back it up. The key is going to be that trough in the west, right back through here. Okay, That really is going to be the most important feature. Is, is there going to be something crashing into this ridge right over here? Is there something that's going to be crashing into this to make this system weaker and less important? Um, the, the model today uh, kind of has a fairly decent trough running down the middle of the country uh it, it doesn't you know it crashes it to some degree but it holds on to that trough and then it swings it up and around i mean if this is if this is the case and it times out exactly correct then the gfs may may be right but if uh, the timing is a little bit different if this is faster if this ridge is a little weaker then you're going to be much more offshore just like the other models did during the overnight so that pretty much sums up what we're seeing here uh I, it, it's not a huge change really from the prior runs it's just kind of doing these shifts back and forth back and forth uh what i'm going to do later on this afternoon uh, i will post on meteorologistjoechoppy.com and on ssstormchasers.com i will do a gfs model european model comparison and you can take a look at that and um, we'll see what the European does because the European does have a much flatter look here uh, and has held on to that idea, uh, which would take something out, you know, well to the south and east of us. And the Canadian model last night kind of did the same thing. So, and, and in fact, when I looked at the ensembles and several other models of the hurricane plots, I mean, very few of them brought them that close to the coast. It just seems like the GFS up until now has been, is being kind of an outlier here. But Let's see what happens later today. And we still have to deal with a Category 4, almost Category 5 hurricane uh, in the Caribbean that's going to start its turn. And by the way, yeah, let's take a look uh, at that, and we'll give you the latest loop here. Uh, the, the eyes become a little bit on the ragged side this morning. You can see it there. Uh, it's flaring up, and it might be doing the eye wall replacement cycle. Moving, you know, looked like it looked like it was moving west. Now it looks like it's moving, either doing a loop, because uh, it looked like it, it, it's actually turned a little south again. So I, you know, we'll see what happens. Sometimes the uh, motion can get erratic when a system is slowing down and getting ready to turn, because we are going to expect this to turn to the right uh, in short order. Let's uh, look at the uh, infrared picture and see how the eye shows up on this. And you can start to see it sort of reforming after it clouds over, just starting to reform again. And it is definitely looks like it's taking, uh, you know, at least it seems to be turning to the, uh, to the southwest again over the last couple of frames. And here it is on the wider view. Um, and you can see it here once it refreshes and, you know, just kind of churning along. There's our trough in the Gulf of Mexico uh, with these clouds. Uh, moving south to north. So it's getting very close now to that weakness where it should start to turn. Okay, have a good rest of your Saturday. Don't forget to check the meteorologist joechoppy.com, ssstormchasers.com, and weatherlongisland.com. And sometime this evening, I'll be launching nycweathernow.com.